Hey everybody, welcome to another Mark Harville Art Painting Tutorial. It's been a while since I recorded last and uh, you know I've, I've had the both fortunate and unfortunate circumstance occur where I've just had a series of commissions come through that have really occupied a lot of my time. And um, I've been working most recently with uh, an author who's written a series of science fiction stories that he's compiling and into one book, one volume of, of like mini, uh, little, little mini series or mini stories, um, short stories, I guess, if you will, uh, in science fiction. And so with that, um, I've had several paintings um, that I've had to complete for him for his, for his book. And this happens to be one of them. Um, and so I had to paint this, this picture here of this individual that got shot with a with an ice arrow. He's turned to ice. He's falling from a uh, a windmill, and so uh, those are kind of the instructions I got. So I had to paint that, and guess what? I have to do it again. I got to paint a second one now, um, except this time when I bring in the windmill, the little ice guy. He's shattered here on the ground. And, um, and so I've had to repeat this, and of course I brought in the same background that I've already done. I'm getting ready to bring in this windmill, and I thought it'd be kind of nice to show you, you know, and just kind of as a side note, a lot of the paintings that I've been doing uh, for this author recently, they've just been really kind of off the wall, I suppose, a little bit odd. Definitely not something I typically like to paint uh, and share, but I did think I could show you about putting in this kind of stone work. This would work very well uh, for stone fences, for cobblestone. Uh, there's some different applications, and I, th I thought I can kind of show you my technique for bringing in some very effective stone work here. And that's kind of what I think I can show you as I, as I bring in this windmill uh, one more time. Now the reason I say that it's been both kind of a blessing and a curse is that it's taken so much of my time here the last several months uh, putting uh, these commissions kind of in um, in an order of priority I, I guess if you will. Um, but it's also prevented me from being able for a very long time to kind of paint what I want to paint and that's been unfortunate. I'm, I'm you know, starting to prepare to do some some art festivals uh, coming out here, up in Florida here. We've got some great art festivals throughout the year since we have, have such great weather here in Florida year round. Uh, but specifically as we move into kind of the latter part of the year and into the new year, that's kind of where most of these festivals tend to congregate. So unfortunately I've not been able to um, to really prepare as much as I want for this show. I've got a lot of back stock of some of my work, but I, I don't have anything really new and I've been wanting to kind of add to my inventory. So that's been kind of a challenge, um, but it's also a great blessing because, hey, who doesn't want to get commissions uh, and, and make some extra money? That's always a great thing. So anyway, that's kind of my introduction. Um, don't want to delay this any further, so. Let me go ahead and let's just jump in and let me show you how I put together this uh, stonework on this windmill. Okay, let's get going. So right now it's just a matter of bringing in some, some gesso. I want to get this nice and dark and have a really good foundation that will really uptake the, the color. So we'll lay this in, kind of add a little bit of uh, so, some insinuation on some stones on the side here and little bit of grass and of course I'll I'll do all the the grass and dirt and everything later on uh, what I will focus on really quickly of course is going to be the wall to this windmill so we'll get that on here let that dry for a few minutes of course I'm using acrylic so this will dry pretty quick now I'm just uh, scumbling I'm taking um, just kind of a blue gray mixture that I've made um, and I'm not putting too much on the brush and I'm really letting the brush kind of deplete as I'm adding this on. And then I've, of course, lightened it up with a little bit 
of a little whiter, lighter version of this blue-gray just by adding a little titanium white. And again, I'm kind of skipping around, but I'm just sort of scumbling on a lot of texture, leaving a lot of brush stroke. I want to have all these marks. It's going to be really helpful. And doing the same with kind of a little bit of a, of a highlight here, which I've just used a little bit of orange, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little burnt umber, um, just to kind of create this kind of nice little light brownish or tan kind of color. Now I'm starting to stipple on some blacks, and this is really all I'm doing, I'm using a very uh, pointy little bristly brush, and I'm gonna stipple on just a bunch of tiny little dots, and then I'll give us a little bit of texture and some pores. Get a little bit more kind of activity and movement in these, in these stones, a little more character. Coming back and adding just a little bit more highlight, a little bit more of that blue gray, making a couple different sort of brush strokes going in all different types of directions, which is really what I wanted to kind of achieve here. And I'm not even necessarily looking for softness. I don't mind having some of the kind of stronger, sharper strokes. Um, that'll all work out pretty well when it comes to just really making this look like an old, weathered, gnarly sort of stone wall. Now I've gone ahead and used my charcoal pencil and I've outlined the stones that I want and now I can come back with my script liner brush and use black and I can start to, to kind of just paint those in following those guides. So I get this kind of all done real quickly here and and then in a few minutes I'll come back and I'll start sort of um, smoothing out the edges on this. I want to have a little bit of gaps in in where the where the where the uh, stones are joining, and so on the corners and edges I'll add a little bit of some gaps using this smaller brush now, and kind of rounding out these corners so that they're not so kind of hard edged and sharp edged. Um, and that'll give it, again, that really kind of weathered look where it kind of looks a little bit more like they're laying on top of each other, not necessarily coming together in some sort of perfect form. Okay, so I was used, showing you the bone black. This is a bone black, which is a very transparent black, and I'm just adding some shadow now. I've let this dry fully, and... I can come back and since it's so transparent a lot of that texture underneath will show through but it'll help to sort of give that more of a three-dimensional feel about these stones. Some of them are jutting out, some of them are a little bit more recessed and that's kind of what I was looking to try to do. So pretty quick uh, video um, but pretty effective way I think of getting of getting this accomplished. Well, there you have it. So that, I think, is a fairly effective way of creating any sort of stone work, stone masonry. Like I said earlier, it could be those stone uh, fences. Um, it can be, you know, stonework on architecture. Uh, you could even use this technique just for any sort of rocks and stones you want. But, um, you know, there's, there's never really a good um, shortcut method when it comes to doing really fine detailed sort of uh, rocks and um, at least in my opinion um, those that almost have sort of a realism to them and so I just found that this is a pretty effective way uh, of, a, of accomplishing that so I hope that was helpful for you thank you so much for viewing this uh, thank you for subscribing and I uh, hope you'll join me next time. So please keep those comments coming and let me know what you'd like to see. So long.